In this presentation, we're going to discuss about error handling and validations in C. So this is basically some best practices, nothing which we have not discussed so far. So unfortunately, most of the programs do have bugs or unexpected scenarios. So all we can do is hope for the best and quote for the worst. So one of the things we can do is validations, validations of the function result return value of a function. Other thing we can do is we can validate all the pointers we are dealing with. If these pointers are valid or not. This discussion is not about exception handling in Windows. The structured exception handling or SEH. We are not going to discuss SEH here. Also other type of exception handling like try catch in C++ which is implemented using SEH or set jump etc. We are not going to discuss in this particular presentation. So error card and function call validation. So in C, depends on the documentation of the function, always check the success of the call. So most of the C functions return error cards. Most of the libraries does that. Some of the libraries create exceptions which we are not going to discuss. Most of the functions, most of the C libraries return error card. Say for example, Win32 API, Windows Kernel Mod APIs, etc depends on the return value of the function we have to handle that case properly so we have to look at the documentation of the function to understand what it returns and what it means we'll see an example later in some cases the failure of a function is too fatal we may have to end the application itself in some cases it's not that fatal and we can continue but it may affect only few functionalities of that program so as I mentioned, in the case of failure, we have to show a meaningful message or log a meaningful message. If you are author of a library function, it is a very good practice that you should return a meaningful error card to the calling function and document that error card, what it means. Another important thing we have to do in the case of a function failure is to clean up all the resources we have allocated before the failure. So how do you know a function failed or not? documentation of the function as I mentioned before. So we're going to see an example of a malloc. So this is a function which returns an integer. In that what we are doing is we are calling an malloc here. So this ptr is supposed to contain the return address of the malloc. So first thing we are doing is checking if malloc is successful. If malloc is successful you will get a valid pointer otherwise you will get null so if you're getting a null what you're doing you're printing this error message and returning false you are finishing the execution here so you cannot proceed through this function if this allocation fails so that is my business logic so now I have handled the situation where malloc fails an out of memory case or something like that. I have handled it here. Now I am calling another function here. So that is an important function. So if this function fails, again I have problem. I cannot proceed. So this is an important function for this program. If this is returning false, so if that function fails, as per the documentation, if it returns false, it fails. What I am doing is I'm freeing this memory which I have allocated here. This is very important to understand. So you have to deallocate all the resources you have acquired before the failure and then returning false. I don't have to do the free here because I'm handling the case that the allocation itself failed here. That's why I'm not doing free here. Next what I'm doing is I'm calling a function which is less important. So if it fails all I'm doing is just printing that particular functionality is failed. It's not a fatal problem for me in this particular program. And I'm continuing with the program, continuing with the function. And at the end I'm freeing this particular buffer which I have allocated here. And I'm returning true. So if I go here or here 
I will never reach here. So this is a typical look of a production code. So it's again a little bit of pseudo code. So this is normally production code looks in a fault tolerant way. So there are a couple of issues with this approach, this validation. One is uh, the code can get a little bit ugly and cause additional instructions due to all these checks. We are checking every time a function call is made and doing some action based on the return of the function. So the number of instructions for the function can increase which can lead to something called code blot. So it cannot handle a situation like this. So if you check error code, if you have something similar to this in the code, the code will still fail. It will still crash. It will fall into the operating system. So for this kind of scenarios, we have to use exception handling or structured exception handling. We will discuss ACH in a different presentation because it's another big topic and it's also operating system specific. So anything which generate an interrupt, anything which switch into the kernel mode of the operating system and the operating system expects that the application will handle it. That kind of scenarios cannot be handled through error code returning and validation. So these are some of the other methods we are not going to discuss it here. So structured exception handling and in C++ you have something called try catch and in C there are a couple of functions like set jump etc. But none of this method we can use in certain scenarios. For example in the case of an ISR of a device driver because all this method uses interrupt in one way or the other. So we have discussed about function return value and pointer validation. Also it's a good practice to validate all the inputs to a function. A function can be called from anywhere inside or outside the program. It's always good to validate all the inputs to the functions, input arguments to the functions. For example, if a variable is supposed to represent months of an year, we can validate if that variable is not above 12 because months of year is always less than or equal to 12. Also we can validate results of some calculation for example you're getting two values from some calculation and you are about to divide those two values you can check those values at zero because division by zero is not defined. Also another important point is data from outside user devices like network card etc validate always those kind of information before you use it because it can be malicious as well. In those kind of scenarios you have security implication as well. So that's it. Thank you very much.